What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am back home, back in the man cave, back to trying to get some stuff done here, and I am mystified at the moment here about what the hell is going on with the Dallas Cowboys and Kellen Moore. <sighs> you know, they used to say no news is good news. I guess if it was an easy decision, they would have already said Kellen Moore is coming back. I guess that we're not going to find out anything anytime soon. Now, I will say that game time, game time, Brian, actually, you know, he, he maybe game time is right. His thing was maybe instead of saying Kellen Moore, you know, see you wouldn't want to be you. They're giving him time to try and get another gig. But the thing is, another gig, um, you don't make a lateral move, which would be offensive coordinator for somebody else. And I'm not sure anybody else would hire him as offensive coordinator right now. So if that's the case, you're giving him time to find another job. Are we assuming that it's in football or would it be something else? So I don't know on that one. I have a feeling, a deep feeling that the Cowboys will still hold on to him. I just have that feeling. I know what we want is we want him out. But then again, we also know that the Cowboys will let a sore fester. Remember when it was Jason Garrett? They literally had Jason Garrett do the dead man walking day after day going into the office for about a week. Is this what we're doing? We're, we're going to have Kellen Moore do a walk of shame. Um here here's the reality the reality is I, I spoke on this as i was driving home and being scared of going over the bridge the reality is this you know we as fans want to just be able to blame somebody something and of course Dak prescott is the easiest target to blame but people don't remember what everybody said about the cowboys team going into the season worst off season ever for the cowboys they don't care about winning for once they were actually right as i look across the board you know we got people that are saying go get this guy go get that guy draft a quarterback here's the thing we've seen you know i i i, I i'm old enough to remember that tony rum was a really good quarterback too We failed in sometimes the defense, sometimes the playmaker, sometimes the officials' calls. Very rarely have you looked at a complete team from the Dallas Cowboys and said, that team is a great team. Now, and I'm not talking about the hype that you get from the talking heads. I'm not looking because we always get that hype that the Cowboys are a talented team. You know, I, I heard that for every year for the commanders. You know, when they go out and sign a bunch of free agents – and things that they're a talented team and this talented team should do something but i don't honestly look at the cowboys teams we've, we've done, been good really good on offense been above average lately on defense but look at a complete team that you look man for man where you just line up and win i see that with san francisco and i see that with the eagles right now they're just better personnel wise they're better coach than than other teams The reality is the thing that's been killing the Cowboys is they don't use free agency. Now, mind you, you can't build a complete team through free agents. It costs too much money. You don't have enough money to do that. Washington's done that forever and it hasn't worked. What you have to do is you have to have a basis of a good team. And you're going to have to get a few more pieces to be able to compete against others. Until the Cowboys do that, 
you know, we can be good with players that we draft, but we need to be better. And that's where a couple of players make all the difference in the world. This whole thing of some of the things you hear solutions wise are crazy. And these are by people that are supposed to be experts in knowing what they're talking about. Deep dive from Skip Bill. I I have to do this because anybody out there who understands football or has any kind of sense, unless you're just trying to get a reaction, it's not actually about a solution, knows that this can't work. Listen to this, okay? Again, I remind you, Aaron Rodgers is 8-2 and two, lifetime versus my Cowboys, 2-0 and oh in playoff games versus my Cowboys. And as I said on this podcast, ahead of the Cowboys at Green Bay game this year, when, by the way, we blew a 28-14 to 14 lead through three quarters and lost in overtime, I told you, I first guessed it, Aaron Rodgers is our Count Dracula. He swoops in under cover of darkness and sucks the life of us out of us on a consistent basis. And by the way, that game at Lambeau this season, you realize Dak had the ball four times in the fourth quarter in overtime and managed to score zero points. Not that guy should have known. Now, you also might recall that dating back to, I don't know, 2007, my days on first take, I was the first in the national media to call out Aaron Rodgers as the all-time blame-deflecting, finger-pointing, media-manipulating diva. Aaron used to fire back at me for a while, but he doesn't anymore because I'm pretty sure I've been proven right about that, and he knows I have been right for low these many years about that. Also, for many years, I've called him out for his playoff choking, and I have been right. He's 7-9 postseason since that long ago, far away, Galaxy, far, far away Super Bowl. Remember that road wild card run? to his one and only Super Bowl. He won the MVP. I give it up. I give you that. But of course, do I need to remind you, had the number one seat coming off MVP in 2020, lost at home in the NFC Championship game, the first one of his career to Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, had the MVP and the number one seat in 2021, lost the first playoff game, the divisional round, to Jimmy G at home. This season, he lost the equivalent of a home playoff game to Jared Goff and the Lions. So now you ask, I I want Aaron Bleepin' Rodgers to replace Dak Prescott? You better believe I do. That's how done I am with Dak Prescott. Green Bay can have Dak. Lil Wayne can have Dak. Even though he's 29 to Aaron's 39, I don't care. I would take... Aaron Rodgers at 39 and 40 and hope he could recapture a large portion of his MVP dominance with a late career change of scenery, like Peyton going to Denver, like Brady going to Tampa. Why not? He'd be throwing the CD, he'd be handing, I hope, and flipping to Tony Pollard. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is still a trick shot artist to me. And by the way, He's actually won something before. He he did that. He actually won that Super Bowl. Dak has won next to nothing. He's now two and four in the postseason. And three of those four losses came in divisional round games. One step short, hitting his head on his ceiling, short of an NFC championship. So you can accuse... Wayne and me are playing fantasy football, but I I don't think so. This deal makes sense to me, and I hope it makes sense to Jerry Jones because it's time to do something desperately dramatic. It's time to move on from Dak, get out from under Dak, just the way Green Bay clearly wants to get out from under Aaron. We'll trade problem for problem. 
We'll start over with Aaron for two years, and we need to go find a kid quarterback, some Brock Purdy. Maybe it's in the second round, third round, fourth round. I don't know. Somebody to start to groom to replace Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Because that what always he works. A rebirth. What if he wants to go until he's 43 or 4 like Brady does? I, I wouldn't put it past him. So my concluding text to Wayne was, and I quote, Packer Dak versus our Aaron in next year's NFC Championship game. Wayne hit that with the Are two you exclamation mark emoji, the two exclamation points. And then he texted, I would love that. So would I. Okay. This is kind of cute that he says that, you know, this is fantasy football. That people will say it's fantasy football talk. Let's, let's just think. Okay. First of all, Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers don't get along. Aaron Rodgers was the reason Mike McCarthy was fired in Green Bay. So do you think that Aaron Rodgers wants to work under Mike McCarthy again? That's the first thing. Second problem is $50 million that Aaron Rodgers is being paid. $50 million that he's being paid. Our problem now is we really are up against the cap. And we need more talent because, you know, Aaron Rodgers this year, who played in, I believe, all the games, without Devontae Adams, his numbers were pedestrian for Aaron Rodgers. 3,695 yards, a 91 rating, tw uh, 26 TDs, and 12 interceptions with a 6.8 yard average. And worse yet, as we talk about the Cowboys losing to San Francisco on the road, on the road to a team that had more talent and better coaching. Green Bay lost at home with Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback to the Lions, only scoring 16 points against said Lions. And if we win, we're in the playoffs. Couldn't do it. The funniest thing is, is when I've told people that before, they said, well, that was against the Lions and they were really, you know, they, they got hot. They were a good team. The Lions against the Green Bay Packers. I won't dispute that the Lions play better than they usually do. But are we now saying that the Lions and San Francisco, the, playing the Lions at home versus San Francisco on the road is equal? Let's look at this. This is actually the statistics comparison. Dak season versus Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers with 17 games, Dak with 12. Completion percentage, Dak 66.2. Rodgers, 64.6. Yards, now, Aaron Rodgers did have five more games. 280 versus 60. I mean, 208, sorry, 2,860 versus 36. TDs, actually, we can make this easy. Actually, let's go down here. Per game this year. Per game this year. Dax got more completions by one and a quarter. Temps, just about the same. The yards, Dak is about 21 yards more. TD percentage, he's almost a half more. The interceptions, Dak is more by half. Dak's taking less sacks and is actually running the football better. This is not a reality that could happen even if you wanted it to, if Jerry Jones. 
Dak Prescott's got a no trade clause. It's not going to happen. Aaron Rodgers, as much as we talk about Dak Prescott choking, you got to look at it and say, Dak and Aaron Rodgers both lost to the same team, the San Francisco 49ers. The Cowboys weren't a number one seed. They were a wild card team. The Green Bay Packers, the year before, were the number one seed, and they got beat with Jimmy Garoppolo throwing for 116 yards. Now, of course, in the same case that people are saying, well, the Lions are a good team. They were saying, well, the weather was bad in Green Bay. Come on, people. Come on. Let's be real here. Let's try and get real solutions for the Cowboys. We'll dive into this deeper tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern at my live stream. Hope you're having a great night, and I'll see you then.